Okay, so getting back into our coverage over X-Men comics, as we work our way up to X-Men Inferno, we do pick up with New Mutants number 65 and 66. Now, this was a two-part story arc where you have magic trying to kill off Forge. Let me explain. So back in Fall of the Mutants, Forge and the X-Men had to work together to fight against a new enemy known as the Adversary, who came from a different reality, who was trying to come into the main Marvel Universe to rewrite it in his own image. Now, luckily for the universe, the X-Men and Forge were able to push the Adversary back into his own reality. But here comes the problem. There was a hole between the two realities, and so the Adversary had an easy way back into the main Marvel Universe. And so what the X-Men did was, thanks to a spell by Forge, they turned themselves into energy to block the two realities from one another so that the adversary would not have a way back into the main Marvel Universe. And the entire world saw it on live television. And so to the entire world, the X-Men are dead. Now at the end of that story arc, Lady Roma was able to bring the X-Men back to life, but the rest of the world has no idea they're still alive. And so when it comes to magic, the last thing she saw was her brother and his team giving up their lives to save the world. And she blames Forge because it's Forge's fault that the adversary even came into the main Marvel Universe. And so she wants revenge. Now, she's also upset with Magneto as well for a lot of different reasons. For example, in our last story arc, Magneto told the New Mutants that they are not allowed to use their powers nor be able to lead the school because it was them being reckless that got their team member killed off, talking about Cypher. But also, when it comes to Magneto, he tells Magic, I'm not going to go after Forge at all because when Charles Xavier left, he he left the school to me and he also left you guys to me to be in charge of you. He did not leave me in charge of the X-Men at all, which means I cannot do anything at all when it comes to the X-Men being killed off. I'm sorry. And for Magic, that is not okay at all because her brother died. She lost the one person in her family that she was close to. And so because of that, she gets very upset and she leaves. But she does tell her team and Magneto that her end goal is to kill off Forge. But then we jump over to Mir Island, where we pick up with Kitty Pride. Now, Kitty Pride was part of the X-Men, but she was not there in Dallas to help the X-Men to fight against the adversary because she got seriously injured in the Mutant Massacre event alongside with Nightcrawler and Colossus. Now, Colossus was able to get healed up just in time to help the X-Men. Kitty Pride, well she needed more time to properly heal up. But the problem was by the time she got healed up, she saw on live television the X-Men giving up their lives to save the world. Now that is when you have magic appear. Now magic and Kitty Pride, they're best friends. And this is magic saying, help me Kitty, let's go together to get revenge against Forge for killing God Colossus, my brother, your boyfriend. But for Kitty, she watched what the X-Men did. It wasn't like Forge forced the X-Men to give up their lives. It was the X-Men who had decided to give up their lives to save the world. Now, like I said earlier, no one knows that the X-Men are really alive at the moment. But either way, it's Kitty saying, I'm not about to go after an innocent man because you're upset that your brother died. Your brother died on his own choice, his own device. It was up to him to decide what he wanted to do. And now here you are trying to go after an innocent man. It's not right. And once you have Magic hear those words, she gets upset with Kitty like she was with Magneto earlier and also like she is right now with Forge. And so she leaves to begin the process of killing Golf Forge. Now we do pick up with the rest of the team who are currently getting ready to change into their outfits just in case 
magic does come back there and they can use their powers to hopefully stop her. But while you have the team talking, she does appear to grab her suit to leave to go after Forge. But luckily for our heroes, they were able to get the jump on magic, except she was teleporting. And so you have the entire team teleport over to Limbo. Now, this is where I want to sit down and have a quick conversation about Limbo. And the reason why, because when it comes to Limbo, it is connected to the emotions of magic. For example, if she's in a good mood, then Limbo will not be as bad as it usually is. Because, hey, there are still demons walking all over the place. But if she's in a bad mood or trying to get revenge, then Limbo is not really a good place at all. And matter of fact, when our heroes arrive, they realize that Limbo is a whole lot darker than it was the last time they were there. And she tells them because how she feels. She wants to get revenge against Forge. And so that is why Limbo is so dark and scary. Now, here's the thing. Our heroes are trying their best to convince her to not go after Forge because they believe that he is not really responsible for the death of the X-Men, but she's not listening at all. And so our heroes have no choice but to go with her, not to help her fight against Forge, but to stop her just in case she goes too far with the idea of killing him. Now, there is one more thing I do want to talk about when it comes to Limbo, and that would be the Soul Sword. See, the Soul Sword is magic's weapon but the problem is she has to leave it in limbo to keep limbo in place because soul sword not there is not there sorry then other demons have the ability to take over limbo but if soul sword is there then no other demons can properly try to take over limbo so for example when you have our heroes leave with magic she does take soul sword with her and that's the wrong move there because now sim one of the many demons of Limbo now has the ability to try to take over Limbo for himself. But getting back over to our heroes, you have our heroes travel over to Dallas to look for Forge. Now here's the thing, Forge is not alone at all. He's with Freedom Force. Now Freedom Force was a very interesting concept in Marvel Comics around this time. See, when it came to Mystique and the rest of her brotherhood of evil mutants, they began to work for the government as a way to be forgiven for all the crimes that they had committed. And matter of fact, they fought alongside with the X-Men against the adversary. And so the reason why Forge and that team is still there in Dallas, because this picks up just moments after the ending of Fall of the Mutants for the X-Men. But either way, as soon as our heroes arrive, you have magic wanting to go after Forge. And of course, it leads into a battle between Freedom Force and New Mutants. Now, this battle does last for a while until everyone stops and realizes that Forge is not there. It was Mystique pretending to be Forge for a very good reason. And that is when you have Destiny walk in and she says, listen, I saw a dark future and this dark future is coming all because of you, Magic. And so you have Destiny explain everything to everyone who is there by saying that when it comes to magic, she has the ability to bring the end to the entire world. Now, let me explain. She says that because magic has a hunger for revenge, that hunger is going to continue to grow to the point where her dark child side will come out. Now, Dark Child is really more just the evil version of magic, but if that side comes out, that could be the end of the entire world. Now, thanks to Mirage, Danny Moonstar, she was able to use her abilities to project the fears that Destiny is talking about, where demons will begin to attack all over the world, and that'll be the end of the entire world kind of hinting to Inferno. Now, when it comes to our heroes, they're wondering, how can they stop that from coming? And Destiny says, it all comes down to magic. She has to work through her problems because if she doesn't, that will happen. If that does happen, it's the end for everybody.
Now, the rest of the team, they don't believe what Magic is saying. Matter of fact, they believe that she is lying right now as a way to protect Forge. And so while you have most of the team saying that, you didn't have Magic also believing in that as well by saying, listen, it's all lies. They're trying to hide Forge. Where is Forge right now? I want to see him. And that is when you have Forge appear. He said, listen, I heard that you have been looking for me. Well, I'm here. You want to talk? Let's talk. Bring it on. And so getting into the next chapter, we do pick up with Forge and Magic fighting against each other. Now, when it comes to their battle, they're really evenly matched. Now, even though Forge has been a sorcerer for a longer time than Magic has, Magic is a very powerful character thanks to her powers coming from Limbo. And so she is able to go toe to toe with Forge. Now, there are some things I do want to point out about their battle. For example, Magic Soul Sword. Now, earlier I told you Soul Sword was a way to keep Limbo in check, but Soul Sword has the ability to cut through almost any kind of magical armor or magical attacks, anything magical base. But here's the thing though, because while she was fighting against Forge, she did cut a rock in half. Now, the rock should not be really that important, except the rest of the team realized that there is a demonic face on the rock and you have our heroes wondering if what destiny said is actually coming true about the idea of demons being able to take over the world thanks to magic and so you have our heroes agree with one another they have to work together to stop magic before those demons are actually able to take over the earth but getting back over to the battle between Forge and Magic, you have Forge trying his best to have Magic understand that he understands what she is going through because she's not the only person who lost someone. He did too. He lost Storm, the woman that he loved. But on top of that, it was his fault that he lost Storm because he was the one that brought the adversary into this reality. He tells Magic many years ago, when it came to me being a soldier, I watched my entire unit get wiped out. I wanted revenge like you do right now. But the thing is, I began summoning demons into our world to get my revenge. Now, I was able to get rid of those demons, but I also realized that was a huge mistake. But the problem was when I did that, I left open a portal for our reality into the adversary reality. So yes, I understand what you're going through, but what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to control your rage because if you just feed into your hunger for revenge, sooner or later, you are going to make a similar mistake like I did when it came to the adversary. And then down the road, somebody very close to you is going to pay for that cost. Now for Magic, she's not trying to listen to Forge, but you have Forge say, I give up because I want to die. And hopefully when I do die, I will be next to Storm. Now, when it comes to magic, she's getting ready to kill off Forge. And matter of fact, you have the demons in limbo talking to her saying, do it, do it. Because they know if she does it, then her dark child side will come out completely. And then the idea of demons being able to take over Earth will come into reality. Now, here's the thing, because you do have her team trying to talk her down, saying, do not kill Forge. Don't do it. Do not let into your darker side. And luckily, their words do reach her mind. And she realized that she was about to make a huge mistake if she had killed off Forge. And so she puts the sword down. And once she does that, she tells Forge, you may go back to Dallas. But here's the thing. I realize that you do not deserve to die. You don't deserve to be next to Storm and my brother in heaven. So goodbye, go back to Dallas and suffer and realize it's all your fault that you lost the woman you love. And then you have our heroes go back home to the school of Charles Xavier. 
But once you do have our heroes being able to go back home to the school of Charles Xavier, they realize that Magneto had no idea that they were gone. But also they realize that he is wearing his old Magneto outfit when he was a bad guy. Now when it comes to our heroes, they do remember that he is part of the Hellfire Club as the White King, but it seems like possibly he might be going back down the road as a bad guy again. And for our heroes, they're wondering what could possibly happen next. Now, before today's video end, we do jump over to a random space station that belongs to the next bad guy our heroes are going to face, and that would be Spider. Now, when it comes to Spider, I'm not going to sit down and try to explain who this character is. I'm going to save that for our next video. But when it comes to Spider, he's going after somebody on Earth, and that would be Lila, the girlfriend of Cannonball, who is also a teleporter. Now, when it comes to Spider, he would would not go after Lila on his own. Instead, he is going to send in his servant, and that would be Gossamer. Now, when it comes to Gossamer, she's also a new character that I'm going to sit down and explain in our next video. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see y'all next time. Later.